Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and in today's episode everything you want or have to or just want to know about the INAF ESC telemetry. Before we begin, a few very important informations. A. ESC telemetry will work with INAF only via a separate serial connection from the ESC to the flight controller via a separate serial port. It's not bidirectional D shot, no, it's the serial telemetry that is available in the BL Heli 32. That means you will have to use BL Heli 32 and to wire a telemetry wire between the flight controller and the ESC. Next, there is no RPM filter yet, at least not in the INAF 2.3 that is released just right now. It's only for the voltage, current and the OSD information about the rotation speed of the motor, the RPM of the motor or motors that can be displayed on the OSD air log and locked in the black box lock. That's all. In this video I will show you how to connect ESCs to the flight controller BL Heli 32 to have the ESC telemetry, how to configure in this in INAF and what you can do with it. Let's begin. Like I said in the opening part of the video, to make the ESC telemetry work, you will need an ESC that is compatible and is able to output the telemetry on the special, oh, the focus went, went off, on a special pad located usually somewhere near the signal inputs. It will be marked either as T telemetry or over here tele or takes or something like that. Always refer to the manual of the ESC. The ESC will be probably running the BL Heli 32 and this is fine. So the ESC will have to accept the ground wire, the plus wire, the signal wire and the telemetry wire that will connect the telemetry paths of all the ESCs you have on your quad or an airplane to one of the serial ports on your flight controller. Like, like I did over here. You see, there are four wires, power minus, power plus. The red one is the signal wire connected between the separate pad on the flight controller to the PWM input on the ESC. And the green one connects the TX telemetry pads on all the ESCs to one pad, RX pad of a serial port. All ESCs to the the same RX path or if the, the, the flight controller is designed to a RX path for the telemetry. In case this is Matic F722SE, this is uh, serial port 6. In case of this 7 inch drone, exactly the same situation. The coax wire, the black wire is the signal wire, while the yellow wire goes over there to the RX part on the serial S6. Extra wire connected, connecting all ESCs to the same serial port on the flight controller. From the hardware point of view, this is all. It can be either four ESCs, three ESCs, two ESCs, one ESC, it's not, doesn't really matter. It can be drone, it can be airplane, it will just work. Only when you will do the wiring, try keeping the wiring tidy because it's running close to the high current wires there's a lot of electrical noise and if the cable will be overly overly long that might cause some problem maybe use a coax if you really have a longer like airplane or something like that 
or for example twist the wires to make sure that the wiring is really tidy extra wire connecting all the ESCs to one serial port RX pad in our case in this case in this very particular case it will be the serial port 6 for the INAV itself you will have to make some configurations to enable the ESC telemetry you will need at least INAV 2.3 and then go to the configurator and first of all let's go to the ports tab in the ports tab on one of the serial ports to which RX pad you connected all the ESC, you have to select ESC output telemetry option. Without this, the INAV will not know which serial port will be used to get the telemetry. Next, in the configuration, you have to use either one of the D shot protocols. Or a serial shot. If you don't know what the serial shot is, just ignore it. It has to be either D shot from 150 to 1200, doesn't really matter, and it will be fine. Oh, um, yeah, I think I forgot to enable the silent mode. So uh, let's enable silent mode. Where's the silent mode in this thing? Oh, yeah let's enable silent mode so assign a serial port and enable dshot protocol and this is more or less enough of course right away you will not see any result of the esc telemetry to see any result we can do two things one on the osd we can display the motor rpm from the esc telemetry the option is in the general section in the osd so just enable it over here yeah the preview does not really say what is it but this is enough to output the rpm of this is the this is the average rpms from all the motors it's not rpms of every single motor it's the average rpm of the motors great for the airplanes and kind of useful on the mini quads as well if the esc telemetry is working and the inav is decoding any values from the telemetry you will he see over here the rpm with one decimal place and that's all hi the inav knows how to compute the RPMs? If you are using just any regular motors, then probably you do not really have to do anything because the majority of the motors, with mini quad motors and also airplane motors are really 14 poles. If, however, you are using a very small motor for like two inches or something super that it's not 14 poles, so-called twin. 12 and 14p then you will have to tell INAV how many poles your model has so let's go to the CLI and type get pole and the variable is motor poles like I said the default value is 14 and the majority of the motors for starting from 4 inches to I don't know 12 inches are the 14 pole motors if you have something special you have to know how many poles the motor has to be able for the INAV to be able to decode the RPMs if you are wrong then just the value will be off by how many times the value is wrong the second thing you can use the ESC telemetry for is to take the voltage and the current not from the voltage or the current sensor in the pdb or in the flight controller or anywhere else but from the escs directly i think all the bl heli 32 escs are capable of measuring the voltage but to have the current matter in the ESC, the ESC itself has to have the current matter. There will be a small shunt resistor, then probably the ESC is capable of measuring the, the current. How to configure that? Type get 
matter underscore type and this will give us two options vbat matter type which will tell INAV which method of measuring the voltage INAV use should use we have none of course default which is the default value on the flight controller to measure the voltage via the uh, analog input or the ESC if you will use ESC then the INAV will take the voltage of the main battery from the ESC telemetry the same goes to current matter type default is ADC which is great for the, all the power distribution boards or all-in-one flight controllers but if you want to use the current matter from the ESC check it to ESC so for example type set current matter type equal ESC enter save and that's all we can do it right now and let me configure both methods to the ESC so okay ESC safe and let's restart right now the drone I'm connected to is not powered so let me correct the some kind of battery to it and let's start it as you can see, although I changed the voltage type to ESC, I'm getting some kind of voltage because yeah, this is my voltage. Also, you have to remember that the ESCs are not using any current where they are not powering the motors. So the current draw will always be zero if the motors are not spinning. We are, let's say, losing the information about the current consumed by the flight controller and the camera and the VTX itself. This is the current only for the used by the ESCs itself. There is one more thing that we can currently get from the ESC telemetry is it's the information about the RPMs and we can store the information about RPM of each and every motor and display this in the configurator. So let's go to the CLI and type get debug. This will give us the available debug modes and over here in the debug mode there should be something called ERPM. I'm already having this debug mode ERPM, but let's make sure this is set. So set debug mode equals ERPM, hit enter and hit save. Now the debug, oh, it's beeping. The debug we will have, it's the RPM on, RPM on each of the motors on our UAV. How to say it? Go to sensors and enable debug. Let me start uh, the motors. I will start spinning the motors. And now, you see? 500 RPMs, 900 RPMs. Yeah, it's there, one and a half thousand. Okay, I don't want to overheat the motors running without any propellers. This is a proof that the ESC telemetry on the motors and the ESCs is of course working and the INAF is able to read the telemetry which contains voltage if the ESC has the voltage sensor, current if the ESC has a current sensor, RPMs always of course as long as the motor is spinning and the ESC is working and also a temperature but we are not decoding the ESC temperature yet that was the happy part what if the telemetry does not work to work and you're not getting any voltage or any RPMs on your OSD this is unfortunately the part when it gets signed kinda let's say tricky there are a lot of factors that might make you do not receive the correct telemetry data. First of all, check if you really have a D-shot because the D-shot is really required for the telemetry to work because each, each separate ESC has to be polled for the telemetry because they are all using the same bus. Check the wiring. 
and uh, unfortunately sometimes really sometimes the ESCs are let's say they just do not want to respond with any really any useful ESC data. I had one set of the ESCs. I will not tell you which company they are, but they are those uh, which have something just odd on the output on the telemetry path. Instead of having the high state checked with the scope, by the way, it's not that I'm imagining stuff. They just have the low state and from time to time have some peaks which look like the serial data. I never really was able to make them return any telemetry. Just replacing them with something else solved the problem. So I just, I just stopped. Mm, and, uh, and yeah, I think that's all for today. Um, this, the, the RPM telemetry really opens a lot of very interesting things because with the telemetry and with the RPM of the motor, not only you can apply the RPM filters that Betaflight just introduced and INAF will also get because I really planning to implement that, but also you can measure things like motor torque, for example. Yeah, really, really kind of kinda a lot of open open areas are there if you know the the rotation speed of the motor and the propeller and knowing the torque generated by the motor is really like yeah it's a very 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 useful very useful thing indeed so that's all for today thank you for watching please remember to subscribe and click this bell icon with the notification so you will get the notifications when i publish something new until the next one bye bye